Hello everyone and welcome to today's presentation on Open Roads Designer Best Practice Terrain Modeling. The intention of this session is to cover some of the most frequently asked questions on the use and capabilities of terrains. Hopefully we'll be able to expose you to some things that you may not know that so that whether you're a novice or an expert you'll be able to take something away from the presentation that will be beneficial. At the end, we'll look at a few new capabilities in Open Roads Designer as well. So this is our agenda. As I said, first thing we want to do is cover some frequently asked questions. We'll look at uh, several different options here. We'll look at terrain features versus element templates. We'll look at some XML import options and kind of define what they mean. We'll talk a little bit about to rule or not to rule uh, a terrain. We'll look at boundary options. Uh, we'll look at also terrains from corridors. And then finally, we'll have a little snippet about image draping. And then at the end, we want to look at four new things in Open Roads Designer. We want to look at the difference that 64-bit will be able to make for you. We'll look at a couple of technology previews, aquaplaning and the 3SM scalable mesh. And finally, a new command, clear active. So as I said with the agenda, let's start with the frequently asked questions. The first thing we want to look at is the questions regarding terrain feature definitions versus element templates. Now, as I'm sure most everyone is aware by now, with Select Series 3, MicroStation uh, introduced a new terrain element type. Um, and of course, along with this new element type comes cr new creation methods, new display capabilities. And, and one of the ways that MicroStation controls an element, uh, I'm sorry, a terrain, is through the use of an element template. So let's just take a look at this in its most simplified format. So I'm going to come into a terrain, and I'm just going to import one. And I'm not going to assign a feature definition. I'm just going to import it straight in so it just takes on um, the default. So I've entered, enter, uh, imported a XML file. Now what I want to do is I want to control this through the use of element templates. So I can come down here. You'll notice here if I go to the Manage dialog, you can see I've got several element templates delivered in our particular uh, workspace. And this, these element templates can cover not only the basic level color and weight but they can also cover whether you want triangles on or contours on uh, again what the contour spacing is just all the different types of information that you would have about uh, terrains this is all part of the element template definitions and so you can just see here a lot of the information that you can uh, you can control. So by selecting one of these element templates you can control the display. So for example if I was to go down here in my list and let's say select existing boundary well this element template only displays the boundary. If I was to choose another one for example existing triangles this element template only displays existing triangles. And, um, and let's just pick one more for example existing contours. And so again, these are just being controlled by element templates with MicroStation um, out, of the, out of the box. Now, just as element templates allow you to control the symbology of a terrain, terrain feature definitions actually give you additional properties. And so one of the questions we get sometimes is, well, why should we even set uh, terrain features if the element templates allow me to control the symbology well the reason is because um, terrain feature definitions give you additional properties for example they allow you to define the surface volume type whether it's existing surface a design surface a subgrade or a substrata the other thing it allows you to do is differentiate um, from different views so for example with a feature definition you could say I want it to look this way in 2d this way in 3D and in a different way in profile. And then finally you also have the ability to add annotation definitions to it as well. So let's let's take a look at that same example again. This time I'm gonna bring in the exact same file but this time I'm gonna uh, go in and select a feature. So I've got a feature here called existing boundary. 
Okay. Now again, um, let's take a look at this feature definition and how this feature definition uh, controls not only symbology but other properties as well. So I'm going to go open uh, Explore, Project Explore, and we'll come down and look at our feature definitions. And you can see under Terrain, I've got the feature definition called Existing Boundary which was added to the file. And if you look at the properties, one of the properties is you get to define the volume option. Of course, this one is existing, so I've got it defined as an existing. And this will benefit us down the road when we need to go do quantities from the model. We'll, we can know which, you know which volume option should be assigned to these individual uh, pieces. Um, you'll also notice if we come down here uh, that you've got a few other options there. You'll notice it points to a surface feature symbology. So let's come down under the feature symbology here and we'll look under surface and under terrain we can see the existing boundary feature symbology. Now you can see here it points to a default element template. So in essence we're using the template to control the level color and weight as well as what you know whether we want to see triangles or contours but notice that I can also define one specifically for profile and also specifically for 3D so I get additional options to kind of control it in different viewpoints as well as an annotation group that later on when we cut the profile from this will be used to uh, annotate this on our sheets Now, a last question that some people ask sometimes, well, what happens if I combine the two? Well, if you, so for here, I've got a feature definition called existing boundary. And what I've done is now I've applied an element template that's overrode the definition of the feature. Okay, so my original feature only, only wanted to show boundaries. Now I've said, show me my triangles. Okay, and you can see this has been turned on. Now it's still got the feature definition. It's still there, um, but we've just overridden it. Now that's, no, that's not a problem. Um, you can override that as long as you want, but just keep in mind that if you make any change to the terrain, like for example there I removed the boundary, the terrain will regenerate itself, and when it did it reverted back to its original feature definition. So there's not a problem with mixing and matching feature definitions and element templates. Just keep in mind that if, you, if the terrain ever has to regenerate itself, for example, by changing one of the edge methods, or maybe you add a brake line or remove a brake line, if you do that, the terrain's going to regenerate itself and it'll revert back to its original feature definition and its original element template. So the best practice, uh, the preferred method, is to use terrain features to control your terrains, not element templates. Like I said, the terrain features give you additional options that you want to take advantage over. You can overwrite a terrain feature symbology with an element template, as you just saw us do. That's not a problem. However, just keep in mind that if the terrain regenerates itself for some reason, it will revert back to its original symbology. Another frequently asked question we get is regards is with regards to Land XML import options. Now you'll notice when you import a Land XML file, there's a setting that is unique to Land XML, and it is the build terrain from. And you get three options there. You get source and definition, you get definition, and you get source. And the names themselves don't really lend themselves to kind of identifying what it is. So the definition is this. Definition utilizes the stored triangulated faces to define the terrain. Okay. The source utilizes the survey features such as break lines, voids, islands, points, whatever, and then retriangulates from those. Source and definition actually uses both. It will actually use the triangle faces as well as all the survey features and it will create a terrain from, from both. So let's take a quick uh, look at this. So here I am, an open rows designer, and I want to import this exist 631 uh, .xml file. Now before I import it, I want to take a look at the land XML file here. Now um, if I kind of go down there, you can see right at the top you've got this option here for source data. Okay, 
And as I, as I mentioned, the source data would be things like islands and breaks and spots and things like that. So you can see a lot of the spot uh, elevations or spot definitions there. If I come down a little further, you can see that I've got some voids. I've got some islands. There's an island there. Uh, this would all be part of the uh, of the source definition if we were to to use those kind of things there right um, and so you get you can see there there's break line and another break line so you've got all kind of different source information in there as well now if we were to go down the end here uh, we can see um, our faces definition so I'll just come down to the end and you can see under definition it says surface type equals 10 and you can see the individual vertexes of the faces are defined there as well so all of this information is in this XML file so if I want to import that file I'll get different results depending on the different options that I choose so let's bring this in and I'll call this one exists 3631 from definition okay and we will set our option to use the definition which is the triangle faces okay and I'm just gonna set this to no feature definition here so we'll just come in the default level color and wait so we're gonna import this XML file and it'll process and you can kinda of see it comes in and the triangles are are there so let's go to the uh, quick properties and let's change the option here to max edge length and let's set the length let's say to 50 okay so it will update here and you can see there's the triangles now this comes directly from the faces okay so this is basically going to reproduce um, that uh, the, uh, that XML file from the faces now let's do another one here and um, and this one I will call this one existing 631 from source okay and I set a feature definition so I'll get some green triangles so we can see the contrast we'll set our option to source now this is going to read the voids and the break lines the islands the spots and it's going to triangulate from that so once again we get it let's go to quick properties let's change our max edge length to once again let's do the exact same thing as we did for the original and you'll see it gets set to 50 Okay. but immediately you can notice the difference between the white triangles and the green triangles um, the white triangles came directly from the triangle faces uh, the green triangles came only from the source defini definition such as break lines um, islands voids and things like that so most of the time you won't have this drastic a difference uh, between the two but there are times you can and so you need to be you know you just need to be aware of what these different options uh, represent and so you can best uh, use them now you may ask well what's the best practice well again the method here is usually going to depend on the file and the situation basically if you do not want to retriangulate in other words you want to duplicate the triangles from the terrain that generated the land XML file then use the definition method in other words you just want to duplicate the faces otherwise the default and recommended method is to use the source and definition this does triangulate but it uses both triangles and source data to produce a best triangulation if you found this video helpful please give it a like if you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.